What's up Charisma Crew, this is your captain speaking. I've got some time to play around with season 3 of Halo Infinite and I thought I'd give my thoughts on it, so let's jump right in. We have three new maps this season. First is Chasm, which is clearly inspired by boarding action from Combat Evolved. Chasm is easily my favorite of the three new maps because of its more adventurous design. 343 has often played it safe in their previous games by making more generic layouts to their maps. Now don't get me wrong, there are some serious bangers in my opinion, from Haven all the way to Live Fire, but when comparing them to previous Halo games, they do feel more generic. Chasm really gives off those classic Bungie map vibes and plays very differently to anything else in Halo Infinite currently. It's clear that it borrows assets from from the indoor areas of the campaign, but that's not a bad thing. The next map is Cliffhanger, and I'm gonna be honest guys, this is probably my least favorite of the three. Something about the way the combat flows on Cliffhanger just feels off to me. I think maybe it's too big for 4v4. That being said though, I think one flag works a bit better on this map than other game types. And visually, it's a really nice looking map. Oasis is the new BTB map added this season. It's a great addition to the BTB map pool, and it's visually stunning. It kind of reminds me of Halo 4's BTB maps, in a sense that Halo 4 maps like Exile really catered to both on-foot combat and vehicular combat. And in my opinion, that's always a great thing, because everyone can play the game the way that they want. The new weapon added into Halo Infinite Sandbox this season is the Bandit Rifle. I know prior to its release everyone was calling it a DMR without a scope, and while I agree on that on a visual level, once I actually got my hands on the weapon, I have to say it plays more like the Halo 5 Magnum. I'm digging the weapon overall, and scoring a perfect on it is super satisfying. Should it have a scope? Probably. Is it bad without it? Certainly not. As it is now, I think it can coexist between the Commando and the Battle Rifle without any issues. Look, it's not gonna fill a niche, because at close to mid-range, the Assault Rifle, Commando, Battle Rifle, and now Bandit Rifle are all viable, but it's still gonna be usable without being redundant in the sandbox. Just my opinion. However, I still think it was a missed opportunity to add a more interesting weapon from Halo's past, such as the Sticky Detonator, but maybe that's just me. The new equipment added into the sandbox in Season 3 is the Shroud Screen. It looks and sounds really cool, even though I think new players can get confused as it's unclear what the Shroud Screen does when you just look at it. It kind of gives off the impression that it functions like a bubble shield. In terms of gameplay, I think it works in Halo Sandbox, and a lot of people who were skeptical about it prior to playing seem to also agree. While I have yet to see or perform some really clever plays with it, I think it's a fine addition to Halo Sandbox. It can be helpful to remove the enemy's line of sight when you're in trouble. As long as the number of shroud screens a player can pick up is limited, I believe it can avoid being overly obtrusive. I know in Escalation Slayer, things can get really chaotic when you reach the last level, and there are multiple shroud screens everywhere. And speaking of Escalation Slayer, it's the new game mode being added to Halo Infinite, and if you ever played MCC when Escalation Slayer was added, you can pretty much expect the same experience. You start off with more powerful weapons such as the rocket launcher and you make your way through a selection of weapons, until you have nothing but an oddball and the previously mentioned shroud screen. I personally enjoyed the mode a little bit more in Halo 4, but it's still really fun and a great addition to the lineup of game modes in Halo Infinite. We will also get a new 100 tier battle pass, so it feels good to have something to progress towards with the lack of a true progression system. Speculations say that we may be getting it in Season 4, but we'll just have to wait and see. As far as the battle pass goes, it's pretty good with having a variety of cosmetics, from emblems to armor effects and everything in between. The battle pass unlocks the new Mirage armor core, meanwhile the event pass from March 7th to March 21st will give players access to the Chimera fracture core. They both look fine to me, Mirage seems a bit more classic compared to Chimera, which definitely give off some crisis vibes. I know a lot of people are confused as to why 343 is going back to the Halo 5 style armors. Given the positive reaction of the more classic art style, and my theory is that they just want to satisfy both fans of the classic designs and the Reclaimer era designs. I'm not sure if it worked as they expected, but you know, just my theory. Anyways, you know your boy isn't dropping the signature Captain Charisma Sealox look anytime soon. A new season brings updates to the narrative, and my god has 343 really pulled a 180 on the narrative. The cutscenes are way way better than season 2, and actually has players intrigued about where the story is going to go 
go next. It feels less of a, hey, this happened, now go play multiplayer, and more of a story that tries to build a world. You know how I've said over and over again since Infinite's release that 343 needs to make updates to the maps during these events to make the world feel more alive? Well, they finally did. We witness a cutscene where a grenade blows up in the bottom tunnel area of Livefire. The explosion causes the paint of the door to chip away and reveal an Oni logo on the door. And the best part about all this is that you can go into multiplayer and play on Livefire and that door actually looks like how it is in the cutscene. And you can even hear mysterious sounds coming from behind the door. Now that's what I'm talking about. The next event is titled Sight Unseen and is scheduled to drop later later in the season, sometime around May. I'm very excited to see where this leads up to. Infection maybe? And then it's everyone's favorite topic, the store. The store offers super bundles now and will rotate dailies and weeklies. I'm not sure if bundles is the direction to go. It clearly feeds off of players FOMO, like incentivizing players to get bundles to get the cosmetic they want for quote unquote cheaper before it's sold separately for a more expensive price. I can't speak for everyone, but I believe players would prefer to just buy whatever piece of cosmetic they want instead of spending $20 for an entire bundle filled with 80% of things that they don't even want. Like I understand the game needs to make money because it's free to play, but it would just be way less predatory if they did it that way. The UI has also been updated and there's some few pros and cons. The background main menu screen has been updated for both multiplayer and campaign, which both look great, especially campaign looks very cool. We have new music tracks, which unsurprisingly also sounds great, just like the previous two seasons. The game now also informs you if you're overperforming or underperforming on your kills and deaths. I'm not sure if this is a good thing or bad, but I'll take it I guess. The customization menus, however, are a bit buggy and result and massive frame drops. Upon the release of Season 3, multiple people also reported that their games always crash upon spending more than 20 seconds on the main menu. As of this recording, 343 also dropped a new patch, which has improved performances, but the issue is still sorta noticeable. With all that being said though, overall, this is a great season. I wish I could say that this is gonna be Halo Infinite's big comeback. But let's be honest guys, that ship has already sailed, and the massive player base that was lost is likely not gonna come back. I am excited though for those of us who are still playing to be getting more content. If this is the type of content we'll be getting regularly every season, and by season I mean every 3-4 to four months, then it can really start to build some momentum and live up to being a real live service game. But what did you guys think of season 3? Let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed the video, Superman punch that like button and subscribe for more Halo content. I'll see you guys in the next one. Subscribe to Captain Charisma.